Watch this. Same EcoFlow, same cable, but just by changing the battery, the input power jumps from 110 watts to 791 watts, all the way past 1000 watts. Why? And which battery actually gives you the most power? Let's find out. Hey everyone, I'm Ruby. Welcome to the channel. A few days ago, I posted a video showing how I squeezed over 22,000 watt hours of off-grid lithium power into my B-Class RV using just my EcoFlow and a couple of high voltage lithium batteries. If you missed that, definitely check it out. I'll link it right up here. Since that video went live, I've gotten a ton of questions asking, why did you choose high voltage batteries like the Vivor 51.2 volt over a huge low voltage battery like the Watt Cycle 12.8 volt 628 amp hour? And honestly, that's a great question because on paper, the Watt Cycle actually has more watt hours than the Vivor. So what gives? Well, in today's video, I'm breaking it all down. We're gonna plug in multiple batteries, different voltages, different capacities, and you're going to see exactly how voltage impacts the power you can send into an EcoFlow power station. But for those who want the quick answer, here's the results table right up front. As you can see, the lower voltage battery simply can't push as much power into the EcoFlow. But don't worry, we'll cover why and also how you can fix it. To demonstrate the reason for this, I have assembled four different batteries here with different voltages. The first is the Watt Cycle 12.8 volt 628 amp hour lithium battery with 8,038 watt hours of power. This thing is an absolute powerhouse. Watt Cycle really knocked it out of the park. 8,038 watt hours in a compact box that would have taken six plus batteries just a few years ago. The build is solid. The tech inside is modern and it's one of the best large capacity 12 volt batteries I've seen. If you're building a huge 12 volt system, this battery is a beast. Next, I have a Lee Time 25.6 volt 100 amp hour battery. This battery only has 2,560 watt hours of power, but it will work fine for this demonstration. Now this one here is honestly one of my favorites. The VIP Boss packs a ton of power in a surprisingly compact, beautifully built enclosure. The construction is excellent. It feels premium and the performance is rock solid. I'm genuinely impressed with what VipBoss did and they packed a lot of serious energy into the smallest battery here. And finally, the Vivor High Voltage Workhorse. And of course, we'll be pairing everything today with my EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. Now for the important technical stuff. All power station solar input ports have a range of voltage it will accept and a maximum amperage it will allow. The EcoFlow has two solar input ports, a low voltage and a high voltage XT60i port. The low voltage has a range of 11 to 60 volts, a maximum amperage of 20 amps and a maximum wattage of 1000 watts. The high voltage has a range of 30 to 150 volts, a maximum amperage of 15 amps, and a maximum wattage of 1600 watts. Right away, you can see that not all these batteries are within the voltage range of the high voltage solar port. Let's quickly calculate the maximum power you should be able to push into the EcoFlow from each battery. To do that, we just multiply the nominal voltage of the battery by the maximum amps the power station can take. Remember volts times amps equals watts. High voltage equals higher watts because the EcoFlow caps the amps. This is why the 51.2 volt Vivor battery can get close to the full 1000 watts on the low voltage port while the 12.8 volt watt cycle theoretically tops out around 256 watts. All right, let's plug everything in and see what the EcoFlow actually gives us.
For the watt cycle, 12.8 volt, we're getting 110 watts. That's even lower than the theoretical number. Why? Because the EcoFlow lowers its max current when the voltage is low, usually limiting you to around 8 to 9 amps. The fix? A 12 volt to 48 volt step up converter. You'll lose a little efficiency, but you'll gain a lot more usable charging power. For the lead time, 25.6 volt, we're seeing 208 watts, again, lower than expected. Same issue, the EcoFlow's current is limited at lower voltages. For the VIP boss, 38.4 volts, you can see 791 watts. That is on target. This is why the VIP boss is a good choice. Just plug it straight in, no converters, no extra hardware, plenty of power. For the Vivor 51.2 volts, we're getting 1,050 watts, exactly what we expected. Like the VIP boss, plug and play, you get great performance. For the high voltage port testing, both the 38.4 volt VIP boss and the 51.2 volt Vivor batteries performed as expected. And again, yes. If you use a step-up converter, you can use your lower voltage batteries on the high voltage input as well. Also, you can use both solar ports at the same time. For example, here I have the watt cycle attached to the low voltage side and the VIP boss attached to the high voltage side. And you can see we are getting 697 watts. Finally, you can also attach one battery to both solar ports. Here I have the VIP boss battery connected to both the solar ports. And you can see we're getting 1,361 watts. So I hope this quick video helps you understand the importance of choosing the right battery when using a lithium battery as an expansion battery for your portable power station. Check out my video description for discount codes, and thank you so much for watching. Stay charged. Bye for now.